All right. Another request for this video, uh, this question. Make sure you read it five to a hundred times, always. Uh, this is some of the details we have. Um, I've created a new random variable n, and I'm calling that the number of hospitalizations. We want to know something about that. If you think about it, we have a passenger and a driver in a car accident, so uh, what are the possible number of hospitalizations? We could either get no people in the hospital, one person, or two. We need to compute these particular probabilities, right? So we need probability uh, n equals zero, probability n equals one, and probability n equals two. All right, I'm actually gonna start with, um, let's start with n equals two actually. This is kind of, I think, maybe the easiest one. We're told that the probability that one person um, is hospitalized is 0.3. Uh, these are independent events. I mean, the passenger and driver, them being um, hospitalized are independent, so we can multiply these probabilities. So this is 0.3, okay, times 0.3, because they both get hospitalized, so squared. Uh, now, what's the probability um, that one individual gets hospitalized? Well, if you think about it here, um, either the driver gets hospitalized, the other guy doesn't, passenger doesn't, or the passenger does, and the driver doesn't. Another way to think about this is two choose one, right? Um, out of the two people, one person gets hospitalized. Either way you look at it, it's gonna be two, there's two choices, and then uh, one guy gets, or girl, whatever, gets hospitalized, the other one doesn't get hospitalized, right? So does, does not, two choices. All right, uh, what's probably then that nobody gets hospitalized? Let's compute these real quick. This is going to be 0 0.09. Uh, this is 0 0.21 times 2, so this is 0.42. Uh, and whatever this is, oh man, arithmetic, 0.51, so I guess this is 0.49, right? Man, I hope so. Yes, 0.49, alright. Uh, and actually, if you think about it, this is just 0.7 squared, because both people don't get hospitalized, so that makes sense. Alright. Now, uh, what are we actually after? Oh, we're after this, we're after uh, the expectation, the expected number of hospitalizations given the total loss is less than one. Uh, so I have the losses for the driver, the losses for the passenger, and they're both uniformly distributed. So that's why I have a uh, zero to one. Losses can be uh, less than one greater than zero. Same thing for uh, the passenger as well as the driver. All right, um, let me give myself some more room. Okay, um, maybe I should, uh, let me put these values up somewhere. I'll put them over here, right? Let me just record my work over here. Okay, so probability n is zero is 0.49. Probability n is one is 0.42. And probability n is two is 0 0.09. All right. Whenever you're asked to compute conditional expectation, immediately, immediately write down mm -hmm. the definition of conditional expectation. The definition here um, is the following. Uh, something you need to think about here is um, what kind of random variable you have here. This is the thing I want the expect expected value of. I the expected value of n. n is discrete. That means I will not have an integral, I'll have a sum. So I have the sum. I want to sum up over all of the n's. Okay, and now since it's expected value, I need the n in there, and now I need a conditional, uh, and I guess in this case, it's a mixture of random variables, right? We have continuous and discrete, so I'll write this way, the probability uh, that n, probability n equals n, given the sum, okay, the losses, the total loss is less than one. So this is, um, this is the definition, and I'll figure out what I want to sum over Although ob it's obvious, right? I mean, what are we summing over? Uh, n is zero to two. All right, before you start blindly writing things down, always think about what you're gonna do before you're gonna do it. Um, we don't care about when n is zero. Why do I not care when n is zero? Because when I plug in n equals zero, this is automatically zeros out. So I don't give a damn about that. What we do care about though is when n is one uh, and when n is two. So let me um, first write down the main piece of this that we need to compute. And that is this. We need to compute the probability, conditional probability that n 
uh, of n given the total loss uh, is less than 1. So what is this? This is by definition, this is by definition equal to, equal to uh, the probability that they both, both of these, right, probability n equals n and the total loss is less than 1 divided by the probability that the total loss uh, is less than 1. Now, as usual, freaking SOA does a horrible job of explaining this. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say that they just want you to fill in the details. That's what I, that's the only thing that can make sense to me. Or they just think they're super cool and everything's easy, right? And actually, it might be that as well. Regardless, regardless, uh, we need to compute this. First thing I'm going to start with, and usually with conditional um, probability or conditional expectation, I usually start with the denominator anyway, so that's what I'm going to start with. Uh, so what is the probability that uh, the loss, the total loss is less than 1? Total loss is less than 1. And by the way, I should mention something, I didn't write it down, but um, for our uniform random variables, those are conditional, actually. Those are conditional. I probably should have said that. Um, well, let's just, let's go with it. So I need this. Probability x plus y uh, is less than 1. This might be one of the trickier things, and this is where actually SOA just kind of just explains nothing. The way that you should compute this is the following. Okay, this is equal to, this is the probability that the total loss is less than 1 given there are no hospitalizations times the probability that there are no hospitalizations. I'm using what? I'm using the law of total probability plus the probability that the total loss uh, is less than 1 given n equals 1 times the probability n equals 1 plus the probability the total loss uh, is less than 1 given n equals 2 times the probability n equals 2. Once you write it this way, I think that it will be a little more straightforward uh, what this value should be. Think about this for a second. What is the probability of total loss less than 1 given that there are no hospitalizations? If there are no hospitalizations, then the loss is 0, right? I mean, no one gets hurt. There's no loss whatsoever. So that is equal to 1. Probability n equals 0. We computed that. 0.49. 0 0.49 plus, what's the probability that the total loss is less than 1 given n equals 1? Now think about this for a second. If n is 1, only one person is hospitalized. Either we experience a loss for the driver or a loss for the passenger. But what do you know what the loss is for the driver and the passenger? They're both less than 1. I mean, if only one of them happens, and whatever that loss is, say it's for the driver, that loss is less than 1. So what's this probability? This is 1. I mean, no matter what, for this, this means that only um, if n is 1, only one person gets hurt. Only one person is hospitalized. Automatically, a loss is less than 1 by what's given. So this is 1 again. Probability n is 1, 0 0.42. 0 0.42. Finally, we arrive here. What's the probability the total loss is less than 1 given n is 2? Now, this is the trickiest one. So both people get, lo uh, get hospitalized. Okay? And this is the only part I need the picture for. Um, if both people are hospitalized, right, then um, we can more or less look at uh, the joint distribution uh, for the losses. x plus y less than 1 looks like this. This is x plus y less than 1, right? This is x plus y less than 1. Actually, I should shade. What is the probability, okay, looking at that region there, what's the probability uh, that it's less than 1? I mean, given they both they both have losses, right? n equals 2. It's a half. It's absolutely a half, right? I mean, just think uh, how you compute. Uh, these are uniform, uniform random variables, x and y. And I have half of that square. Uh, so it's just a half, right? All right, so this is a half. Times the probability n is 2. Well, we've computed that. It's 0.09. So 0 
Uh, this value, by the way, doing the calculator, this turns out to be uh, what? 0.955. This is 0 0.955. All right, that's good. Now we need to compute the numerator. Okay, so just sort of store this away. Uh, why don't I write it over here? I'm going to record everything over here. So this is the probability uh, x plus y uh, is less than 1 is equal to 0 0.955. Wonderful. Now I need to um, compute this part, the numerator. Okay. Now keep in mind again, our, our values of n are going from uh, 0 to 2, but we don't care about 0 because we'll zero it out. So I only care about uh, when n is 1 or when n is 2. So if n is 1, then what do I have? Probability that n equals 1 and x plus y uh, is less than 1. Uh, what is uh, this going to be here? If n is 1, Okay, and the total loss is less than one. Think about uh, what this is saying here. This is saying that only one person is hospitalized, okay? And therefore the other person is not hospitalized. This is actually, uh, if you think about it, this is the same thing as before. This is actually just 0 0.42 again. Because let me just say what I said. This is saying here that, um, say the driver is hospitalized, right? Then the passenger isn't. Only one person is hospitalized. And uh, the total loss, if one person is hospitalized, the total loss is going to be uh, less than one, right? I mean, regardless. So this is going to be two times uh, one person is hospitalized, 0.3 times 0.7. So again, this is actually 0 0.42. If n is equal to 2, okay, what's the probability uh, that two people are hospitalized and the total loss uh, is less than one. Um, this is going to be the same thing again, actually. This is going to be uh, exactly sort of what we got before. And yeah, actually, if you just think about it, I mean, this is just, use the definition of conditional um, probability again. Right? I mean, maybe I'll just write that in a second, but a claim that this is equal to this is equal to uh, the following. This is just one half times 0 0.3 squared, right? Which, whatever, what do we get for that? Uh, I don't know, I don't really care. This is something, right? But uh, how, am I, how am I thinking of this? Again, if you, if you remember, um, how do you compute something like this? This is really just, uh, if you think about it, okay, this one is, this is probability that the total loss is less than 1 given n equals 1 probability n equals 1. Can you do that? You can definitely do that. This is the definition of conditional probability. I mean, this is some manipulation. Definitely true. Same thing here. We computed this though. We already computed this and that's what we got. So, same thing here. All right. We're pretty much there. Let me record everything over here. So now I have um, probability that n equals 1 and the total loss is less than 1 is equal to 0 0.42. And then I have probability n equals 2 and the total loss is less than 1 is equal to uh, 0 0.09 over 2. All right, hopefully you can see that in the corner. Yes. So I'm going to use all this information. We have, if we have all this, we're good to go. All right. All right, so we're good to go. So now we can compute our expectation. And maybe I'll do it on the calculator <laughs> to make sure this is actually right. I believe it is. Now let me just do it anyway, though. So. Using the definition, here's my definition of expectation, okay? I mean, when you plug in zero, you get zero. So that's why I didn't compute zero, right? When n equals zero, we don't care. So this is equal to, 
I only care about when n is 1 and when n is 2. So this is 1 times the probability n equals 1 uh, given x plus y is less than 1 plus 2 times the probability n equals 2 given x plus y is less than 1. We have computed those. This is equal to 1. Now here, use the definition. This is an and statement. This is, a, we have the information here, right? This is probability that they both happen divided by a probability of this. So this is exactly 0 0.42 divided by uh, 0 0.955. plus 2 from the expected value times this quotient, which is uh, point, point oh 0.09 over 2. Uh, make sure you put parentheses there because division is not commutative, divided by point 0.955. Now, let me just make sure that this equals what I think it equals. <laughs> All right, so what does this give us? Hopefully you have this calculator. This is the way to go for exam B. 0.42. Now these have the same denominator, so I want to just uh, add the numerators. Actually, the twos cancel here too. So plus 0.09 uh, divided by 0.955 is the following, and I hope this is this is right. I think 0 0.534. 0 0.534. Yes, and I think that answer is B. Wonderful. All right, I hope this makes sense. hope this was helpful. Tell me what you think. Um, please like the video. Please subscribe to my channel. And uh, good luck with your studies for exam P.